Next up, MasterCard CEO says Bitcoin makes people scared. And um, I mean, if you're scared of making profits, I suppose. But in, in all honesty, I have to say that I, I have to bring this up because these are the types of questions that people are going to ask you as time moves forward. And we really get into that parabolic bull run. I think we can all, we can all feel it right now. Uh, there's a big momentum shift. And I think 2021 is going to be uh, one of those, just one of those years. So you're going to have to be uh, one of those people. Uh, that has to explain Bitcoin to your friends, family, and loved ones, even after they ridiculed you for investing in the cryptocurrencies. <laughs> let's just be honest. So let's dig into this article. So MasterCard CEO Ajay Banga, that's a good name, took a swipe at Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency, during the virtual Fortune Global Forum uh, today, October 27th. Banga prefers central bank digital currencies, or CBDCs, over Bitcoin, surprise, since he believes that they are better at improving financial inclusion around the globe. And I was, when I first read this, I actually did a live stream today on, on Theta, and I asked this question. I said, are CBDCs really that great for financial inclusion? I mean, they, they are stable, uh, let's be honest. But the problem with CBDCs that I see is that um, you can confiscate them. You can take them over. You can freeze them. And for governments that are out there that are doing this all the time, uh, this is a bad proposition for the people who are unbanked. Now, look, it's better than being you know, unbanked to have something. But in all honesty, for censorship resistance, CBDCs are, are awful. And then it, it really all depends on what the CBDC is actually uh, backed with. If it's the central bank of that government, then sometimes the government themselves are bankrupt. So what is that really being backed up against? And then if it's backed up against the U.S. dollar, I mean, we just saw a nice little story about shorting the dollar and then how, I mean, really the dollar is going to weaken. So is that so good? Um, let me think in the comment section. I just don't see it. Anyhow, the CEO said the wild swings of cryptocurrency makes people very scared. And sure, I mean, who wouldn't be scared when if you bought Bitcoin last month and you spent, you know, 11,000 and now it's almost 14,000. That's scary. That's scary to make all those gains. He says here, uh, can you imagine someone who was financially excluded trading in a way to get included through a currency that could cost the equivalent of two Coca-Cola bottles today? And then 21 tomorrow. That's not a way to get them included. That's a way to make them scared of the financial system. Okay, there's, so, there's two things. First of all, uh, let's say we're in a third world country, right? And we have a charity set up and we give away 20 Satoshi, whatever it is, 100 Satoshis, uh, it doesn't matter. And then, and we did this at the beginning of October. And now, now they have like, instead of 20 Satoshis, they got like 30 Satoshis. And like, wow, I just didn't do anything and I just gained all this money. This is fantastic. Now, as opposed to like, like a CBDC and then it's it's just stable. Maybe it's uh, backed against a good currency that, that the government is kicking out. Maybe it's not. So that's one of those things where it's like to increase, uh, that would, would be very scary. No, wouldn't it be awesome? However, on the flip side, it is very true. Uh, we just saw what happened to Bitcoin during uh, the coronavirus outbreak in March. And we saw it go from uh, robust nine to ten thousand, all the way below four thousand. So that is one of those problems. I mean, once you see his XRP, that thing hasn't fluctuated at all. It's been like a quarter. I talk about it all the time. So that wouldn't be so bad. But again, uh, as far as like censorship re resistance, you can censor a central bank digital currency. They can freeze it. They can stop it. They can do whatever they want to. Bitcoin does not allow that. So I think that is the much superior option. And then here's another thing. And I actually got this from the Theta live stream. Someone said the same thing with uh, with stocks. You know, if, if you want to be talking about how awful these financial instruments are, stocks are the same way. You, you buy it for a dollar, maybe it goes up to 100 bucks. Or maybe it stays at a dollar, goes a little bit down. They're all financial instruments. So why not just use the ones to the best of their abilities? Anyhow, to finish up, this wasn't the first time Bank said this. Uh, back in 2017, he said the exact same thing. He used that bottle analogy, which I think is kind of weird. But he says, if I pay for a bottle of water in Bitcoin, one day it's two bottles for a Bitcoin. The other day it's 9,000 bottles. This does not work. Any currency needs stability and transparency. Otherwise, you will get the illegal activities in the world. Well, we know what I'm going to say about that. I mean, if you want to look at all the illegal activities and what is being financed that, it's the U.S. dollar. So don't give me that nonsense. And the second thing is that over time, Bitcoin has been an excellent store of value. And look how much it has improved just this year alone. So if you're going into an area, third world country, 
that is unbanked, maybe Bitcoin isn't the, the most fantastic idea as far as stability from day to day to day operations. Store of value is fantastic. Maybe there's something else. I just don't believe that central bank digital currencies are going to be the answer, especially with censorship resistance. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next article.